still available there? Maybe not, he might be working. So from my understanding, um, each of the um, committee chairs is gonna take about five minutes, talk about kind of what's going on right now in their committees and a vision for the, um, the year of what they wanna do. Uh, we'll jump right into it. I think everybody's been prepped that it's coming and by order what's on my screen, we're gonna pick on Yola first for club admin. So uh, Yola, the, the floor is yours. All right, thank you very much. Um, well, so, you know, my year has been relatively simple given um, COVID and our inability to do a lot of social activities. Um, some of the things that we focus on in club administration, obviously are setting up the meetings, setting up, um, setting up, taking down the meetings, providing, you know, food when we have food. It also includes setting up the speakers um, which Stefan, you know, stepped into that role this last year, and he's done a tremendous job making sure that we have um, good quality speakers for our Zoom meetings. Um, we also try and focus on scheduling like um, one classification talk by a tenured member every quarter, and we we are working to schedule new members within their 90 days of their installation. Um, typically, we would look at um, attendance records and give some awards or provide annual pins uh, for anniversaries. I actually have pins for everyone in our club for the 50th anniversary celebration. We didn't get together last summer when we were going to have a big parte, um, but those pins will be forthcoming on uh, the 29th when we all gather again in person. Uh, Bryce was able to grab those from the closet for me. Um, the past presidents typically sponsor a social event annually. Obviously, we didn't get to play golf last year, so we'll take a look at what we can do this year um, for playing golf. And typically, we hold quarterly so uh, socials with at least one that's family friendly. And as you know, with COVID, we really haven't been able to socialize very much, um, although that, that cloud is lifting and we are looking at um, opportunities for us to get together. So we've had a couple of club administration meetings just in the last um, month and a half or so. And talking about planning one, getting ready to get meeting back in person. So that was first and foremost, one of our goals. We were hoping to achieve that by the beginning of April, um, but we wanted to make sure to uh, recognize that some of our speakers would still be in Zoom. And so we're holding that off until the 29th of April. So hopefully I see everyone um, at that first in-person meeting. It will be at the Centennial. Uh, an update from the church front, we have not received, um, we have not received word yet that we can go back to the church and meet. They've technically said we could meet, but it comes with a price of a $300 per week price tag which we really just cannot afford um, to do in addition to what we already paid to the church. So um, we're looking at different venue opportunities. Adrian has been kind enough to open his um, Centennial restaurant for us. As long as you know his restaurant is open, uh, not open until two o'clock in the afternoon, so we're not impeding on his business activities, he's fine hosting us. And I think that that's gonna be a great option for all of us. And I know we all wanna support our Rotarian businesses. So it's a great way for us to do that. Um, the club administration committee will probably also look for um, future changes to venue if the church is no longer an option for us. Um, Bryce did pull all of our equipment out of the cabinets there just in case. Um, so we have complete control over all of that. Um, we are also planning the next um, installation banquet. We are planning to meet on June 10th. Um, that is the date that we're, we're penciling in right now for installation of new officers. And I have reached out to Angel of the Winds Casino to see if we can use their space there and their catering because that's a good place to gather. Um, Jenny was also looking at a couple of other venues, but I don't know that we've had a whole lot of success with some of those additional places, but keep that date in mind and a save the date will go out once I know that we've secured our venue. Um, so it could change just a little bit more. Um, other than that, that's really what we've been doing in club administration. It's been a pretty quiet year with um, a lack of activities, but we'd love to get some additional social 
activities on the calendar if people are up for it and and want to meet we want to certainly do that there's a lot of people really um, done with being cooped up um, let's see eric is saying do we have to all stay clothed um i don't know i maybe not <laughs> depends on on how open everyone is to that idea <laughs> it, it anyway. might aid with social distancing if we're not yeah, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Anyway, so that's all I have. I don't know if anyone has any questions, but I'm happy to entertain them. Perfect. And I think what we'll try to do in the interest of time is go through the committees and then whatever remaining time it will take um, just open questions to all. Um, with that, then, Tony Warner um, signed in perfect time. Are you uh, ready? Sure. Um, so I have some news I thought I'd share today. Uh, just was chatting with Dave a bit. I am. I'm taking over the Banner Bank in Pullman, Washington, and I am in the process of purchasing a piece of property in Colton, which is just south of Pullman, and potentially going back to school to get my MBA over in Cougarland. So, um, yeah, so I thought I'd announce It's your that. MBA through WSU. I'll be your instructor. That's what Dave said. <laughs> so, okay. For six classes. <laughs> yeah, so um, that that'll probably start next year, right? Congratulations. Now. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so um, right now, uh, the challenge is just trying to get my house on the market, and um, I think we've lined up a rental uh, for a year while we're trying to build this house. So. Hey, hey, Tony, that MBA program over at Pullman, is that a two-week or three-week course? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> we just hand it to you when you walk by the door, Gene. Oh, okay. It's not even a week. Yeah. <laughs> oh. But that that's uh that's on the back burner first. I gotta get my home built. So so um that's that. So with that being said, is, is we're going to have to fill my my spot. Yeah, that's uh, that's kind of the latest and greatest right now. All right. Well, that's big news. We'll miss you, but I'm excited about um, new opportunities for you. Yeah. So I'll be reaching out to all the Cougs uh, for to connect with Rotarians over there. <laughs> Let's practice and I'll say go Cougs. <laughs> Yeah, and then you can when the house when the house is done, you can all come by and visit before the games. So, perfect. And my my nephew is being recruited for baseball over there, so we're fingers crossed on that one. So, all right. Thank you, Tony. Um, AJ, then we're going to move to you for public relations, and Mel, you're on deck. Thanks, Joe. So um, the goal of PR is to build awareness about, of Rotary and its activities and um, for external audiences. So as Yola said, this has been somewhat of a quiet year, a little strange for all of us. Um, one of the noted things is we lost our one of our local papers. So that's been a change. Um, and what well, we're seeing this a lot in other projects as well, but um, we were relying a lot more on social media and our own media, like our website, to share our story. So um, some of the projects we've worked on this year have been um, uh, promoting Rotary Foundation Month and the members that gave, the drug blood drives, any of the um, any of the service projects, um, site uh, reporting back on the successes and helping support um, signups to external groups like other clubs and community members. Um, Polio Plus donations is something we covered. Also the Duck Dash, of course, of 2020 that was not, but we did, of course, raise a lot of money for scholarships. And that's something we'll be working on soon is um, acknowledging, again, those sponsors from 2020 um, who made it possible to give, I believe it's 50,000 is the number in scholarships to graduating seniors, and that will be um, published in May. Um, we're also going to be communicating about the Duck Dash um, and sharing news. Um, 
I'm probably jumping the gun on Jim, but there is an upcoming blood drive on May 3rd. So if you haven't signed up yet, do. Um, I believe the I believe the uh, support roles have all been filled, but donors are still needed. Um, what are other things we've done is the Christmas cards for seniors, for food baskets. And um, I just want to give a plug for PR. You know, you don't have to be a professional communicator to participate. If there's anyone who likes to share stories or communicate visually, I just encourage you to get involved. As far as the vision for next year, um, Chris Kuhn is going to be taking over. So I'm not going to speak to his vision, but and he was unfortunately unavailable today, but um, I'm sure he'll do a great job. So uh, get involved. I'm sure he'd love to have you on the committee, I'm sure. Wonderful. Thank you, AJ, for that report. Um, we'll move then to Mel with Foundation, and then Jim Kelly, you're on deck. So um, I am very new um, at the foundation. This is only the second month. Um, so my plan is to connect with um, Kathy McCone um, after tax day um, so I can get update and um, see where we're at as far as Paul Harris is um, and then make a plan for foundation month for um, November. Um, and so if anybody um, wants to be on the committee or has anything to share with me, I'd be happy to take the information. I attended um, with Yola and Devin to the grant seminar. So I got a lot of good information on um, global grants um, and our district 5050 grants. So I'm looking forward to learning more about that and just exploring the position and hoping to raise as much money as we can for the foundation. That's it. Excellent, thank you, Mel. And Jim Kelly, then you are up. And then Dave, I think you're um, going to be um, on deck for Jessica. Um, well, in, in, in looking forward to last to this coming year, um, the 2021-2022 uh, rotary season, I, I like to also look back on what we've done over in the 2020-2021 rotary season. And um, I think everybody needs to give themselves a, a very strong pat on the back was um, we, we've accomplished quite a few projects. We, uh, by the end of the, when, when this season ends, we will have completed um, even projects, including multiple uh, um, blood drives. We built a Gaga pit. Um, we uh, did again, the Santa run, the food basket, Chris, Tina Davis. Um, we have an Arbor Day Earth Day event coming up. And we also, as AJ alluded to, have another blood drive coming up. Um, looking at everything that we've done, it, it was a very, very successful year. Uh, even though we were um, quarantined. Uh, we had 67 volunteers coming out for projects, um, 352 hours donated, 117 units of blood collected, um, 300 lives saved, and uh, $3,825 collected for the community in cash donations. So um, that's a, quite uh, an accomplishment, uh, you know, during a, a year of quarantine. Um, in, in the coming year, um, I think we should keep going forward with our quarterly blood drive. I mean, that's something that we've established pattern and I think it's a very uh, strong benefit to the community. Um, as we go forward, we want to we talk about doing a lot of work at Haller Park and we said that we've adopted Haller Park. I think we need to make it official that Rotary has, is, that's going to be our adopted park so that we can come down there and do um, volunteer maintenance of it, whether it's maintenance of the park itself, uh, the play equipment we installed, or the splash pad. Um, I'm also looking into developing a working relationship with Snohomish County Healthy Forest Project and seeing if we can get one or two service projects over out at the Portage Creek Natural Wildlife Area. Um, we haven't been up to the Boy Scout camp. We need to get back up there uh, and see if we can work with Dwayne and get a service project and some plaques on the cabins that we built. Uh, we're also gonna have our normal winter projects, the Santa Run, Christmas food baskets, the Tina Davis Christmas switch, and the Stilly Senior Center. So um, 
looking at the 2021-2022 uh, the season, I think we have a lot of projects. And I'm always open to any projects that people bring in, whether it's for the uh, Boys and Girls Club or any other um, community outfit that, that can use our services. Wonderful. Great report, Jim. Thank you very much. And the new services, Jessica Ronar is out um, in Idaho entertaining the youth. So um, Dave has uh, her report. And then um, Eric Scott will be on deck next. I think you're helping with that too, Dave. I can do that. Or I, I was told that you had that uh, link ready to go, but I could do it also. No, you give the report and I'll get that other one queued up. Okay, I'm giving the youth services report. Uh, because of the COVID, there are a few things that we haven't been able to do. The, the district uh, suspended, actually RI suspended all the exchange student program because of the COVID. Uh, the Interact group uh, is in the process now that the high schoolers are back in school, they're, they're in the process of, of getting going again. Uh, because of uh, Again, the COVID pandemic, uh, there, we haven't been doing any student recognitions. And I think the plan, according to Jessica, is just to start that up again next fall. The thing that's been taking most of the time and youth services has been the scholarship program, selection of scholarship recipients. Uh, we extended, the committee extended uh, the deadline till tomorrow at five o'clock. The selection committee is headed up by Judge Rancourt. Uh, she reported to me this morning that there's been 29 applications, so the extension made a big difference. Uh, there's all, all four high schools have uh, folks applying. Uh, Grace Academy has one, and there's a, a home school. Uh, so it, it's, it's looking good. They're, the committee is expecting to have the selections done by May the 1st. Uh, we have scheduled a a presentation of the recipients for our meeting, I believe, on May the 20th. So as far as next year is concerned, I guess uh, the, the, the big expectation is that, uh, that, we're, that the COVID pandemic is going to be done with, people are going to be vaccinated, and we can get back to our various programs. I also think that uh, coming up, we're still hopeful uh, at at our regular meetings of having some of our former exchange students uh, do programs. I know Chris Schlomach, who's from Germany and is practicing uh, medicine in Switzerland is offered, and I, I'm pretty sure that Lyndon Goodson in Australia has also offered to come on. And so uh, that's all I have to report, uh, Joe. Excellent, thank you, Dave, much appreciated. And I will get in here and get Eric's report. So Eric Scott um, um, went ahead and recorded his. He's on a, a short vacation. So hopefully this will share and play well. Hi, I'm Eric Scott and I'm the chair of the Rotary Funding Committee. So we're I'm on vacation this week for spring break. So I appreciate Stefan and Dave letting me video in my presentation. I hope it goes well in my absence uh, without any technical difficulties. Uh, so the funding committee reviews grant applications from organizations within the local community that need a little extra help with their events. Uh, the committee is made up of about 15 members that are part of the committee. We accept applications for community events from organizations that may not have other avenues for funding. And so we like to help the underdog in our community. Some of the examples of applications that we have received this term have been uh, there was an ECAP program, uh, like a child care program over at Eagle Creek Elementary, Stilly Senior Center, Christmas Wish, Lakewood School District Senior Parade, and Village Community Services. Not all these applications were approved, but many were. Um, and it's been a bit slow this year on processing applications because of COVID, but as we get through this lockdown, we hope to have more organizations in support from Rotary. So why do we do it? Rotary is a community service organization that is an integral part of giving back to the local community. Our only fundraising event, the Duck Dash, collects donations from the community so we can give it right back and make where we live and work a little bit better place. So the process is organizations fill out the grant application located on our website. It comes to me and I forward it to the funding committee for review. 
we then talk about it and come to a recommendation for the board on whether to offer the requested grant. I then present our recommendation to the board once a month and a final decision is made. Uh, I contact the applicant afterwards and let them know whether the Rotary will provide the grant or not. So if you know of an organization that has an event that may need additional finance assistance, please encourage them to apply. The application is again on the Arlington Rotary website. Uh, thank you for letting me speak today. Unfortunately, I'm not live, so I can't answer questions. However, if you do have questions, uh, you know, please speak up. Any one of our committee members um, you know, attending today can respond. Thank you and have a great week. Perfect. All right. And so that is all the, that's all the committee. So I guess that leaves us a little over 15 minutes now for committee chairs to go ahead and field questions. How about the duck dash committee there, Joe? Yeah. Okay. Well, duck dash. So, um, I mean, you, we all got hopefully the email earlier from Yola that has, um, great sample letters to reach out to, um, past donators. Uh, we've got a list of um, who's um, uh, received donations from where from um, 2019, um, given a better snapshot of maybe who, who would be good to approach. Um, we want to go ahead and start hitting this hard. Um, we are at the mercy of kind of how the county is progressing. So as we know, those updates, we'll share them right away, whether this is going to be a, a dry duck dash or not, if we're going to have um, the parade this year where we can be out selling tickets or not. So um, a lot of it is, um, you know, we're going with the, the local developments of what we can do. But um, the, the main takeaway is Let's start reaching our our um, businesses, our partners, um, and start getting those donations. We have a, a goal that was um, listed, um, I think, real nicely in there by Yola about how um, many um, don't you know don donators we want to get in uh, each of those categories. So uh, just hit your list hard, and and Duck Dash is going to be a success this year. Um, Joe, were you thinking about putting together teams as we've done in the past? I don't see why we would not. I think that's a great idea. So absolutely. Right. So more to come on that. Um, look for the email. We're going to have teams. Um, um, always has, uh, always makes it a little fun to have that friendly competition. Competition? Who's competitive in this club? No one. <laughs> I'm looking squarely at Dale. <laughs> Duck Dash himself. <laughs> I know. Do they make rings for toes? Because I think I have, Dale's out of fingers. I have the duck. Somebody wants this duck. There we go. Perfect. There you go. <laughs> So that's really all I have to report um, on Duck Dash is let's hit it hard. Teams will be out soon and um, you know we'll share information as it develops of, of what this is going to look like this year. But whatever it's going to look like, it's going to be successful. So, questions for any of the committees? Uh, I've got a question for Jim Kelly because I heard him uh, mention the splash pad. Uh, is the splash pad going to be open this season, or is that still a big question mark? It's a question mark. I'm proceeding with getting the uh, um, the op the permit operating permit for Snohomish County Department of Health. Um, the the, the, the uh, what was said was there are other similar splash pads, pools, water, outdoor activities. Everybody's on hold waiting for everybody to see what somebody else is going to do. Isn't it funny? Nobody wants to be the pioneer. Well, I think the Arlington know. splash pad should be the first pioneer. <laughs> ah. <laughs> I will give you Mayor Tolbert's phone number. Yeah. <laughs> Question for Yola, did you, you you gave us a date for the installation. What was that date again? I believe it's June tenth. It's the second it's the second Thursday in June. 
I got another question. Uh, I heard AJ say that one of the local papers has closed. Which which uh, publication is that, AJ? You're on mute, my friend. Push the wrong button. Sorry. Um, the Times is on pause. The Arlington Times. Mm. Uh, I'm sorry, you said Arlington Times? To my knowledge, they had ceased operations last March. Are they going again? Are you getting it? Well, they just launched a new app. Send it to me. I think since Sound Publishing bottom, it's always been considered a part of a, a, sun, a Sunday supplement to the Herald, it's, which is kind of weird, but that's, that's it. I see we have a couple of people signing off for other meetings. Are there any other questions for committee chairs? I got a general question for the group, if that's okay. We're you know, trying to set up a one classification talk per month. Um, we don't always have one new member per month. And in that case, we're looking to do like a reclassification of some of the veteran members. We've already done, uh, what did we do? We did uh, Kurt McVeigh, as well as John Mino. Are there any uh, uh, longtime Rotarians that want to throw their hat in for the, the next time we don't have a, a new classification talk? Chase. I heard someone say Gene Chase. That's what I thought I heard. Okay. All right. Well, if no one else uh, goes, and I guess Gene Chase will be the next one. Huh? <laughs> Um, Thanks, Bob. It was Cindy <laughs> going to give a wrap up of, of Joe. Was Cindy going to give a wrap up of economics? I heard uh, Yola say we don't have enough money for the cleaning, which would make sense just on good good use of funds. But are we doing okay economically? Is there an issue going on with how, how we're doing financially? Um, I didn't have that on the list to speak to, so my apologies, Bob. Um, I don't know if somebody more qualified than myself wants to, to talk to that, but from what I understand, we're, we're in okay shape. Yeah, I think right now we are, um, from our board meetings, obviously with our meeting structure the way it is, we don't have any expenses. And so, you know, we're not paying for caterings, we're not paying for time at the church. And um, so the happy bucks that people still send through the Venmo account are, you know, growing in the, in the account. We had raised $60,000 from sponsorships um, that went directly to the scholarships. And so we really haven't spent a whole lot of money this year. And I, and I believe we still have quite a bit of money in our charitable giving that could be going out to um, grant uh, requests uh, through Eric's committee. So right now we're doing we're doing just fine. Obviously, if we went back to if we're looking at going to the centennial for our lunches, since we aren't collecting lunch money as part of our dues right now, um, we'll have to pay as we go until we get to uh, July 1st, which is when Cindy will reactivate our normal uh, billing cycles with our normal um, uh, funding strategy that we base our budget on. And if we had to pay $300 a week on that, we would need to raise dues considerably. It's, it's just not even, it's a, it's a non-starter for us at this point. Yep. Good, that's a good update, thanks. Mm -hmm. So Yola, last year, because we were giving the money just straight to scholarships, we had a lot of us gave money through the foundation, Arlington Rotary Foundation. I'm assuming since we're going back to a to, a, to our previous model, uh, we would just funnel those monies through uh, through Cindy, our, our club treasurer. Is that a fair statement? 
Um, honestly, I'm not sure. And I'm glad that you raised that point because um, I had thought that you could always write your sponsorship um, to the foundation or to the Arlington Rotary Foundation um, for tax purposes. Um, you just couldn't do that with tickets, but I could be mistaken. So when I sent out the information yesterday to the club members, I did tell them that they could write their check to the Arlington Rotary Foundation. Um, obviously, I did that without really um, thinking about it. It was from my instructions. Doesn't the foundation master. mostly give to, I mean, don't we give mostly to 501c3s and, and education, which should qualify the Rotary Foundation as a pass through to those 501c3s with our 501c3, so should be able to write it off so that businesses should do that in the foundation. Most of the businesses can write it off as advertising. Yeah, as expense, that's true. So I don't know, I mean, someone with, um, you know, maybe more CPA background, um, I did send, a, I fielded a question from one of our members this morning about um, a transaction through the foundation. And I sent that to Kathy and Cindy and asked them to comment on it before I responded. All right, so my, my thing is go out there and get your sponsorships. Yes, lots of them. Lots of them, <laughs> yeah. All right, well, if there's no other questions and is there anything else for the good of the order? Reminder of the uh, membership committee meeting right after this meeting. Thank you, Dave. All right, I guess with that meeting is adjourned. So thank you, everybody. Thanks, Joe. Can't Thanks, Joe, have a great week.